Good evening and welcome to Awakening Wednesday. I'm so glad that you could join us today. My name is Gino. I am the music director here at Universal Spirit Center. In the house today, we have Linda, a Linda Ely on piano. We have Sarah Adams uh, back there, part of the production, and Darmini Casavale. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> we have Dormini in the house running the show. So I'm so glad that you're here. Let's just take this breath in. Join along. It's a song you haven't heard in a while. But feel free to sing, to dance, to move. Let there be peace on this earth. Let there be peace in my Take the own presence within right now. We just rest in this own divine, own the oneness, the all that there is. As we resonate in the own vibration of life in this moment right now, vibrating at our very core, this own, own, connecting with the oneness that is that is me, that is you, that is this entire universe. It is the om that the birds sing and fly in. It is the om that the trees bend and bow in. It is the om that the rivers flow in. It is the om that the animals speak in. The om of the divine that is within each of us. 
we're calling it forth right now. We're birthing forth this divine awareness and we are stepping into this own and to this divine loving space of God. We're stepping into the higher vibration of consciousness, letting it lead the path and guide the way to that which is calling forth for from each of us. That which is calling forth from you and me. It is the Om that takes my breath away. Sometimes it amazes me how strong the power of love can be. Sometimes it just takes my breath away. You watched my love grow. Sometimes gentle and sometimes wild. Sometimes you just take my breath away. Oh, it's too good to slip back. It's too good to lose. Gonna stand on the mountain top and tell the news that you take my breath away. Yeah.
I'm going to stand on the mountaintop. I'm going to tell the news that you take my breath away. dancing and singing. Linda, oh, that was beautiful. Dormini was back there dancing. The whole, the lights were bouncing and dancing. The universe was dancing, baby, is dancing. How sweet. And so tonight, we are talking about connecting consciousness. And I thought from Sunday, why not just dive in to some Emma Curtis Hopkins? So let's get ready for Emma. All right, I'll see you on the other side. interesting for me to have this conversation of connecting with the consciousness of Emma Curtis Hopkins, of different sages that have come before. Um, and I guess it kind of spurred me or got me all riled up, excuse me, on Sunday. <clears throat> excuse me. And so I I wanted to just dive a little deeper, just play a little more in this realm of higher vibration, higher consciousness, and how we are now in the midst of this journey of creating a higher consciousness of living. We are creating a new world. That's what we're doing. How exciting is that? When you step back from it, it's like, oh my goodness. We are creating a new world. And so I thought Emma created a new world for her. I don't know about you, but um, a lot of times with the mystics and the sages and our avatars, I kind of feel like they were like born like that, you know, that they were just born with this third eye, this light that just lit up and they knew. But contrary to that, most of them did not. The majority of them had to go through a journey to find the God within them, to find the higher expression. And so Emma, Emma was a teacher, loved math, and I guess this was during, or right before the Civil War or right after, where it's, um, she got married. And at that time, married women couldn't teach in the class. <laughs> our restrictions, our restrictions. And so her and her family, uh, she had a son, and she needed help, so she had her baby sister come and live with them. And they lived a very, um, they lived a poor life and had a lot of health issues, sickly all the time. And so her neighbor came to her one day and said, hey, I'm going to have a gathering. I want to invite you, but I also want you to know I'm having this gathering. Will you come? And Emma was like, well, who is it? It was Mary Baker Eddy. She didn't know who she was, but she said, okay. 
So she gets there and Mary Baker Eddy is explaining Christian science, is explaining the science of mind, although it wasn't called that at that time, is explaining the divine connection of thought and energy and spirit and that you can heal everything through this alignment and awareness. Now, this was in the 18th century, so these were not the words they were using. <laughs> but I'm not using those words. <laughs> and so Emma, Emma left there like, this is a bunk of hocus pocus. This is some hogwash. What are you talking about? But a few days later, the family broke sickly. The entire family was sick. They didn't have any money to go to the, to the hospital. And so they were doing what they would normally do. And so I'm going to stop right there for a minute because there are things that we normally do. There's a consciousness that has gotten us to this point and that we keep doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. Sometimes we don't say it out loud, but we think things are going to change. Yet nothing in our lives, in our mouths, in our word has changed. We're all still doing the same thing. So her neighbor reached out to her and said, look, let me help you. I want to help you. Let me help you. No, I don't need any of that. But as life would have it, things got so bad. Emma went to her and said, okay, help us. So her neighbor did a treatment. And the next day, the family, the family, was vibrant, was healthy, and living well. And Emma, with the thirst for knowledge, was like, oh my God, but I, I love this. She didn't want the neighbor to teach her. She wanted it to, to come from the, the, the teacher itself. She said she didn't want another student to teach her. She wanted to be taught by the teacher. And so that meant Mary Baker Eddy. So she reached out to her and wrote her a letter and said, hey, look, we don't have any money. <laughs> but I want to find out more. I want to, come, I want to become a student. I want to become a practitioner. And once I become a practitioner, I will pay you back what I owe you if you let me enroll in your class. And Mary did. And so... Emma's beginning was one that she was a Christian, never having anything to do with Christian science, um, believed in the, the living and the, the dying, in the sin and the damnation, and met with a dire strait, met with a dire experience, and seen different and having a different experience changed her whole world. It changed the trajectory of now where she was focused on. She jumped in so completely. And it, it, um, it reminds me of uh, some years ago, many years ago, when Agape and Agent started uh, a season for uh, uh, nonviolence, a season for nonviolence. And I have to say, I'm very proud that I was one of the, on the front line worker bees of that. And the very first season for non nonviolence, we had 64 ways and 64 days of things that you could do throughout, uh, ooh, hold on. <laughs> Am I still there? Is my sound still there? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so a season for nonviolence, um, with Agape and Agent, we had 64 ways for 64 days. And there were events that were taking place all over Southern California. And Agape was at the hub. And so now this was celebrating the memorial of Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And so in between that time frame, these 64 ways of finding peace and nonviolence and all these different events. There were concerts, there were uh, meditations, there were every type of event you could think of was happening. And 
we were at the hub of this. Someone donated us a building in Culver City for us to run this because it was a, a, a mass undertaking. And I worked in the office with my little dog. Now, I tell you this for a couple of reasons, because one, I volunteered. I had just lost my job. I had a difference of opinion. They had a difference of opinion, and their opinion won out. <laughs> and so I was like, well, OK, why not? And I could literally walk to the Culver City office. So I'm volunteering. I would bring my little dog, Spike. Uh, Spike had security job. He would go around, I didn't even know this, he would go around throughout the day and check on everybody to make sure everything was all, all good. And so in the process of that, I worked with Aisha Mason and Greta Shashita. And at that time, Greta, who is now Reverend Greta, was a practitioner. And they gave me Emma Curtis Hopkins' book, um, The Mystical, the, the mysticism of Emma Curtis Hopkins. And I was like, okay, I was excited because I'd heard about Emma and I, you know, I've been taking my classes and things. And I started to read the book. And I came back two days later to them. I go, what is this? I don't know what she's talking about and why in the world would you give it to me? The language was, was different than what I was accustomed to. And they were cracking up. They thought it was so funny. I was like, this is not funny. I don't even, I, I don't know where to begin with this. I don't know what's going on. Um, so Greta, in her beautiful, loving way, said, Gino, just stay with it. Just stay with it. So I tried for a couple of more days, but I threw it off to the side because I was not in alignment with it at all. I, I, I would read one or two words, and I'd be like, where is she going? What is she talking about? And so here's this major event that's happening in Agape. Not in Agape, but in Los Angeles. Agape is, is supporting of it. Agape was very big into sacred service. And so this was a huge service. And I was giving service, but service was now becoming an, uh, a job. It was becoming an obligation. And I had other means and things that needed to be met. Rent had to be paid, my dog had to be fed, I needed to eat, there were things that needed to take place. And so I was met with the principles, the principles. And it was a time for me to grow in my consciousness, but what appeared to be happening was that I was fighting for my life. Because at the same time, as a performer, fighting for that road to have that journey, to take that, that the, the different chances to tour, to, to do this, to do that. And every day, Spike and I would show up. And that would fill my day. And it would disconnect me from I will call it the trauma that was happening in my life because my landlord, I lived in a guest house and she lived in the front house. So I would see her every day and she was from Poland. She'd say, Gina, Gina, when am I gonna get the red Gina? When am I gonna get the red Gina? I got to have the red Gina. I was like, Regina, you're going to get it. Don't worry, you're going to get it. And there was this underlining feeling that I knew that everything would be all right, but I didn't know how. And so when I look at the sages of the world, the avatars, the, the, the higher consciousness, because Emma, Mary, um, I mean, there was a, a whole little group of people that were living in a higher awareness of what was possible at that time. At that time, what is said that women couldn't be teachers, women could not be editors, women couldn't be this, and definitely um, people of color weren't even considered human beings. And with that, you had an awareness that there was a power and that she had seen this power operate in her family. She had seen them go from sickly to a vibrant, healthy life. She saw this unfolding. You know, my God is my good and my good is my God. 
I think when her uh, phrases were, um, I ought to have my good, ought to be that it is to be. That is what is to be. And that's a whole nother awareness of beingness, that when you know that you know that you have good, and that your good is not determined by an outside situation, but it is absolutely determined by your inside connection. But as a lot of us do, and I know me at that time, I was definitely into the, the genie aspect of science of mind. If I just had a genie and I could rub that genie, give me three wishes. <laughs> I'd be all good. Three, just three wishes. Three. And I, at one point, I wrote out what the wishes would be. And that whole awareness that there's some magical uh, genie or some magical thing that is outside of you that can take care of you. I had to grow up to understand that I had replaced the picture of God with this magical possibility that if I if, you know, if I could just make it happen, if I could just get the right people, all of this, this, this turmoil. And it was turmoil because my consciousness was wanting to expand, was wanting to grow, but I, I didn't know where it was going, and I couldn't see how to get there, and it didn't make, like, sense to me. Like, even if it does expand, how is this going to change my life? How is this going to pay Regina her rent money? <laughs> so, of course, those questions weren't answered from that manner. There came a point where, um, because the season for nonviolence happens for about, uh, what is that, from March to April, I think it is, or I forget, no. Uh, April's where it ends. Um, I'm trying to remember where Mahatma Gandhi, he's at the end of the month. April, March. I, I, it'll come to me. Um, but it's about a couple of months in between that time, between the two of them, when Mahatma Gandhi was killed and when Martin Luther King was killed. And prior to that, I had, we had been working, because you, you got to work to get everything set up. So Literally, I had been working probably about four or five months with no money coming in. Um, maintaining, but definitely starting to spiral out. My mind, where I couldn't sleep, I, 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 I tossing and turning, um, hiding from my landlord, uh, she's knocking on the door. Just uh, an intense moment. And I remember one night, um, Regina was knocking, and um, I was just, it, uh, I was a wreck. And so I go to the door, and I said, what, Regina, what? Gina! <laughs> she never called me Gino. Gina, when are you going to pay the rent? When are you going to pay the rent? And I said in my outside voice, I don't know. I don't know, Regina. And there was silence. She looked at me, I looked at her. And we just looked at each other. And she said, Gina, when you have the rent money, give me the rent money. I said, of course I will, Regina. OK. And she left. And I was like, oh my god. For every day, she would be chasing me down. Where's the rent money? Where's the rent money? And I understand. I was about a month and a half behind. So I understood, but just standing in that moment and saying, I don't know, I don't know. I had no answers for her. I couldn't tell her, well, in a couple of weeks, in a, in a, I did not know. And so I went to um, a season for nonviolence that, mo that morning, and I was like, all right, guys, I love you, but I gotta, I gotta start looking for some work. I cannot be here. I'm getting ready to get kicked out of my house. Where will Spike go? <laughs> my, I said, you know he's a, a, a pampered dog. He can't sleep in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And I'll never forget this. Aisha and Greta said, come on, let's have prayer. I was like, no, we got to do this, we got to do that. And that was really very on where, very early on where I would put God second. I would put taking the time to get in alignment. Oh, that's second. I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. Let me finish this now. I'll, I'll, I'll do that when I get a chance. And I'm sure all of us have these moments of, of spiritual growth where, you know, it, the dark is before the dawn. And I don't know if we necessarily have to have those. I think our humanness has become accustomed to it being birthed in that manner. But what if we could move into a consciousness that we did not spend the time in the doubt and the worry and, uh, and the lack? And when you read mystical teachers like Emma, There is a space of speaking, of knowing that no matter what shows up, that the good of God is in it. And so sometimes the, the birthing canal is it, a, little, it's a little, little hard. It's, 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 it's a little painful. We are in the birthing canal right now because our consciousness has been consumed by an old way of living that no longer supports our humanity. It, it doesn't support us expanding. It doesn't support the love and light that we are. It doesn't support the earth that we live on. It doesn't support in any manner. So we are at the crossroads of this divine awakening of connecting with the consciousness that we don't know yet. But I believe it's there. The same consciousness that got us here cannot take us there. And that's with anything. The consciousness of Jesus started at one point, a carpenter that knew that I and my father are one, but had a daily practice of spending time with the presence that evolved to be able to feed the loaves and fishes of 5,000. That's a consciousness. That's a shift in consciousness. These stories in the Bible to me, and I bless each and every person that I'm not disrespecting the Bible, but the Bible is a book of allegories. It is a book of consciousness of people elevating their consciousness to live a higher expression or losing all sense of who and what they are. But there is... Uh, uh, an evolution that's taken place. Let me read one of the quotes for Emma. The I am works inevitably through me to will and to do that which ought to be done by me. That's a mouthful. When I think back to some of my crossroads, the crossroads with my landlord at that time with not working, I thought the big thing was like, just let me get a job. I don't care what it is. Let me get a job so I can pay my rent. But the crossroads that was happening was for me to know that there was a higher presence that was always operating in and through me, in and through my life. And that I don't have to know where it's coming from, how it's coming from, but I do have to know that my good is my God and my God is my good and my good is always. There is not a day that you do not have your good. Not one single day. I don't care what's going on. The good of God is always present. And so maybe about three or four more days later, Aisha and Greta called me in uh, the office and they presented me with a check. This check was backdated from the very day that I first started. That I had now been employed under the umbrella of agent. That they had decided that they had gone to the people that be and said, hey, look, this is what we have to do. I never saw that happening, never uh, expected that. 
But there was a trigger when I said to her, I don't know. There was a release and a letting go. And I let go of the fear. I had absolutely said it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't tell you in two days. I can't tell you in next week. I don't know. And there was this, there was a relief that took place. And I almost think there was a relief for her as she stood there. We stood there looking at each other without anything to say. And finally saying, well, would you get the money, Jenna? Give me, would you get, okay. So now two, two days maybe at the max, I stand there with a the check that, no, that only takes care of my back rent. It, Takes care of everything and a surplus. And a surplus. And a consistency from that point on. An understanding as I sat at my desk, tears flowing with joy, of course, recognizing that I had stopped praying. God help me. At that time, I have to say, that's where my prayers were. God help me. Because God was an outside, external God. It was something that I had to pray to, to get something from. And I'm sure, like Emma, in the early days, when this woman, Mary Baker, spoke to her from a space that there is a power within your word. There is a presence within you that can take care of everything. And she left thinking, this is ridiculous. We don't have any money and we're always sickly. But when it got to a point where she couldn't stand living in the presence of that which she was living, she reached out. And always... The answer is there. The I am works inevitably through me to will and to do that which ought to be done by me. We came here to expand this divine consciousness, this yumminess of life. And we have a great big opportunity right now to expand our consciousness, to shift from where we're living, the window that we're looking out of right now, this window that is tainted, this window that we've all contributed to. We have to recognize that we've all been contributing to the space that we're in right now. And because life is full, because life is constantly expanding, we're bursting at the, at the rim. We're bursting all over now. Because this can't contain the glory of God that we are. This can't contain the good that is for everyone. And so as I said on Sunday, we're not, we have to start again. We're, we, we're, we're knocking down the foundation. We're knocking down an old foundation to create a higher vision, a higher awareness, to, to peek into a realm that we've heard others talk about. We must become our own sages and our av avatars. We must become the Jesus, the Emma Curtis Hopkins, the Mary Baker Eddies, the Joel. We must become the teacher of teachers. This is the call for us right now. And the call is so prominent that the whole world has stopped to become awake to it. The entire world. We're not waiting on a particular person we're waiting on us. We're waiting on our awareness to rise. A couple of questions for you. What are you calling good? 
What are you calling good? In your day, what do you see that's good? The practice that has gotten us here is not the practice that will take us there. So if your good is MBNS News, if it's CNN or CBS News, then if that's the good of your day, recognize where your conversation is, where your thoughts are. This is an opportunity to fill ourselves up moment by moment with good feeling thoughts, with good thinking thoughts, with, with good conversation. And with that comes action. What actions do you do daily that make you feel good? I love that we're dancing in the studios. I, I just, I love it. Because dancing, like singing, has an energy. And that energy just vibrates all the way through you. And you, it sparks different ideas. Even while you're dancing, little things be running through your mind in a different way. Your body feels different. Your mind is open to a different thing. What are you doing daily that feels good? Because what are you calling good? Another question. Can you speak your word and power each day? Can you speak your word knowing that your word has power? Or do you speak it frivolously as though it means nothing? Your word is absolutely powerful. Your words have a vibration, and that vibration is emanating from you. When you speak it, can you believe the power in your word? And if you are believing the power in your word, where is that word? Is that word caught in the old? Is that word caught in fear? See, we have seen what our fear and doubt and worry has created. You want to know what your life is like? Look at, the, look at our world. This is what we've created. We, got, we have to take ownership of that. We've created this. But it also means we can create something new. But not with our old tools. We need new tools. We have to raise our vibration. Here's another quote by Emma that I love. If you will look into the science of spirit, you will see that your life is meant to be sustained by the science of God and not by the science of matter. Not by the science of outside, the outside world. It's not your job or your family or your, your trust fund or, or your lucky lotto number. Uh, it is none of those things. It is that which is within you. And I know we know this, but now we have to take this to another level. We are being called to live at a higher level higher consciousness, connecting our consciousness to that which is a higher vibration than we've ever known before, than you or I have ever known. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What's possible to unfold Emma, being a student of, of Christian science, being filled with this 
mighty power that she realized that she had within herself. Was editing the Christian Science magazine. And Mary Baker Eddy must have been an amazing teacher because she taught some phenomenal students. I mean, Unity came birthed out of there and um, Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes. I remember I saw a picture. When, uh, I was at a library and I thought that must have been a heck of uh, a Sunday afternoon. And they're in a backyard and you see Ernest Holmes, Emmett Fox, Charles Fillmore, um, uh, there were a couple other people, but I was like, wow. The, the consciousness that was sitting around and they looked like they were drinking lemonade. Just discussing the vibration and presence of spirit. At least that's my story. <laughs> and so here was a woman at a time that women did not have rights that was a teacher, that had learned from teachers of teachers and loved her teacher. And here's one of our human things, that this is one of the things we as humans must let go of. Emma, loving her teacher, loving Mary Baker Eddy, wrote about her, how great she was, how the teaching that she exuded, how it expanded others. Mary was starting to feel uh, jealous of the amount of attention that Emma was getting, that some of her other students. So the very word that she's teaching, this presence that she was teaching herself, that the power and the presence is within you, that this almighty word is the, is the God presence, it is God consciousness, that somewhere in there shifted to this littleness that something could be taken from her, someone could stop her from expressing her divine essence. And don't we, and haven't we, and aren't we doing that now? That part of our humanness is being called to be healed, to be loved, and to be lifted. This, this constant fear and uh, uh, just chaotic mode that there is something and someone that's going to take something from us or that we can't have what we need and want or that there's not enough. That part of our human DNA must be shifted. And it can and I know that it will. It's put into the arena of life right now for us to take a good look at it. That with all the racism, the fear, hatred, these old principles that have kept us locked away from our divine essence, these are the things that we are releasing, that we are letting go, and that this higher, lighter weight, this higher vibration, there is none of that in that. There is no hatred and racism in the love and light of God. It's just not there. Because there is no God of that. These are things that we have created. And so we find ourselves... This is her quote that I love this. We find ourselves here. The world will persist in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. I'm going to read that again. The world will persist in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. So for me, that says, we have been in a world of fear, of hatred, of lack. We have looked out at the world and said that there's not enough and that all people are not created equal. And we have so believed this at our very core that we have created and justified reasons why this should be possible. This level of consciousness 
can go no more. So I am committing myself to daily being very mindful of what I speak. That I choose to be in the alignment and in the divine action of what moves us forward out of this. What moves myself to a higher level of awareness? What opens me up to hear the kingdom of heaven which is within me? What are you committed to? Will you commit to being the cat on your shoulder watching and listening for what you are affirming daily? For what you are preaching is the truth. For that truth does become your world. And we are seeing it now. We're seeing the truth that is not the truth, but we have been living the lie. And so now, now we become the sages. We become the great ones. We will become the ones that history will write, that we have shifted a consciousness in our awareness and in our life to move this world, this entire universe, to a higher level of beingness. We will become those if we say yes, and we stay the course. The course is a daily course. It is a daily practice and a daily commitment to the good of God that is within everyone and everything. And if we see something, say something. With our families, with our friends, we can no longer stand on the sideline and let racism and slurs and hatred be said and not stand and say, hey, I'm living in a different world. That is not a world that is created by the kingdom of heaven. This old consciousness must die. There's nothing to fear for God is here. And we are the chosen ones. So with that, I leave you with this. Be mindful of who you are. Be mindful that you are connecting in consciousness, whether you are aware of it or not. And are you connecting with old consciousness, or are you open to the new possibility of what's available there for you? Can you be the mystic in your life? Can you be the sage that you are looking for? Can you be the answer for our new awareness? Those are internal questions. I remember a story, and I don't remember the teacher but this gentleman used to walk in a rock garden. And he would spend hours there. And when they asked him, they said, what do, you, what do you do out there? He said, I'm listening. I'm listening for what they are telling me. He was listening to the internal presence of spirit. So I don't know. For me, I love nature. Maybe it's dancing. I love music, reading, sitting in the stillness. But what are you willing to do to create a new consciousness, a new word that you speak forth? It's pretty doggone exciting because we don't know what we don't know, but we do know that there's only one power, and that power and presence is operating right here 
right now, always. Peace and blessings. giving time. We've been doing some conscious, conscious up in here today. <laughs> oh, it's exciting to be a part of this divine universal spirit center and the consciousness of abundance that is happening right here. This is a very powerful and mighty community of abundance and substance. We know it, we do it, we circulate it, and I am so grateful to be a part of it. It has awakened me and expanded me in my consciousness of abundance. So I thank you all for that. And I thank each of you for donating on PayPal. And you can donate on Facebook now. And for sending and mailing in your tithes. For sending and mailing in your tithes. And I just thank you for your divine awareness of abundance passing the basket. I love it. I have it in my phone now. I just hit give. It pops up. And you know, five bucks or ten bucks or two bucks or a dollar, it doesn't matter. It's the practice of being in the divine expression. 